middleman CEO. Uh, so listen, this channel was created to basically teach people what I've been doing for the past four years now. Well, this is my fourth year since 2020. And in 2020, I stopped working hard. If you know me, you know my story. I stopped working hard. I, within last year, so three years, I was able to completely retire my wife. Now, full transparency, she does still work. She's a dental hygienist. She loves what she does. Uh, so I guess I'll say semi-retire. And the reason I'll say that is because two days or sometimes three days a week, she'll go and work. And so she'll pick an office, go and work. She controls her schedule. And I don't mind because that's okay with me as long as you stay active. But the, what, I, what I should say is I semi-retired her, and, and, but that wasn't even the best part. The best part is that I was able to tell her that we no longer needed her paycheck. So whether she works or not, it does not matter for us. All of our bills are covered because we have a middleman business. And today we're going to do some middleman math because if you saw the, uh, and I know you did, if you saw the uh, thumbnail, I'm going to show you how I made $1,200 in two days. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. There were days when I made $1,200 or more on just one day. But I don't want to overwhelm you. I just want to keep it simple. But there were also days where I made $300, right? So just being honest with you, there were days where I made $300. And then there were days whenever I first started off when I, when I made $1,600. So it was kind of up and down as I learned how to do it. But still, worst case scenario, $300 a day from home using your phone, still not a bad deal. Hit subscribe, hit thumbs up. Uh, I got some great news for you, a bonus at the end of this video. So stick around. It's going to be awesome and it's going to bless you. I promise it's going to bless your socks off. And But before we talk about any of that, hit thumbs up, hit subscribe. If this, if this video sounds like it's giving you any value, if it's something you want to know more about, then hit the thumbs up and we'll dive into it. So whenever I first started my middleman business, my first year of, of doing business as a middleman was 2020. Uh, and this was like coming out of COVID. Uh, it wasn't the best time to start a business. That's what they say. I say every time, anytime's a great time to start a business because the alternative is my paycheck lifestyle and I don't want that. And so I was able to semi-retire my wife, meaning that we, she could really be retired and be, be home all day long with the kids. Uh, but that's probably not the best thing. Uh, my, my wife's in her 30s. She doesn't need to be like sitting home doing nothing. And so she goes to work whenever she wants to. But the best part is we don't need her paycheck. Now that's freedom. If you have to rely on a paycheck to take care of you, I understand. I've done it. And if I lose everything, I'll do it again. But what I want you to understand is that is a form of voluntary imprisonment. And not like the prison with the, the, the lifers and stuff like that. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about financially, you are in prison because you have to have the paycheck. Meaning that if you lose that paycheck, think of everything your paycheck covers. So think about the car, the house, the kids, the food, the gas, the utilities, the Wi-Fi, the iPhone, uh, the new shoes, all the stuff you want to have. There's nothing wrong with having those things. You need those things. But the daycare, daycare alone for one kid could be fifteen, sixteen hundred a month, right? Uh, but think about all those things that your paycheck covers. Now, the scary thing is, what if something happens to your paycheck? And I'll take it a step further. What are you going to do when something happens to your paycheck? Not if, when. Because I guarantee you, the company that you work for right now, they would love to lay you off. They would love to lay you off because it saves them money, right? Well, Sean, who's going to do my work? AI. So if they can, if they can bring in a system or a technology that'll do your work, you're gone, right? Nobody. They may not replace you. They may send your work, and a lot of companies do this. They may overload another worker with your work. They may take your plate, say, get up, you're done here, get out, and then pass your plate of uneaten food 
to someone else who's got to eat their plate and your plate now for the same same amount. <clears throat> that happens too, especially if you're in a corporate business. You got to understand the corporate the corporation's job. If if you're in a corporate publicly traded company, is to save as much money as they can so they can reward their shareholders. You're not as important as you thought you were. They'll replace you like that. Okay, who else will replace you? Students coming out of college who are overwhelmed by overpriced classes and debt. <clears throat> The government will, yes, give them $100,000 in debt to go to school, and they don't even have to promise to finish the degree. The government doesn't care. They'll collect payments on their taxes forever, but they won't give you, the same government won't give you $5,000 to start a business. See? And so you got to understand that like the great philosopher Chris Brown said, these jobs ain't loyal. And because now that we know, and I'm giving you a heads up, now that you know and understand that your job is not loyal to you, then I expect you to not be loyal to your job, meaning your job is going to go out and cheat on you. Your job's going to go out and try to find a better relationship. Your job's going to go out and try to find somebody who will work for less and still do your job. Your job will go out and find somebody who is bombarded with college debt and who's willing to make half of what you make. Your job's gonna go out and find somebody to do your job on the other side of the world. While you're sleeping, they're doing the job you're supposed to be doing, right? For way less. So your job is always trying to fire you. My advice to you, be prepared. My advice to you, don't build your life around a paycheck. I know you didn't know this at first and you've already done it. Gotcha. No worries. I did the same thing, but I know better now. And now I'm telling you, it's time for you to know better because think about it. I'll show you real life how this thing works. So if you build your life, by the way, in 2020, when I started this business, I made 77K my first year. Not bad. My goal for 2024, just so you know how I'm rolling, $350,000 this year. And I'm going to hit my goal. And I want to share this with you. By the way, hit subscribe, hit thumbs up, welcome to the channel. And I want to bless you. But here's what, here's what I need you to understand. That everything in your life is usually tied to a paycheck. So if anything happens to that paycheck, it's going to disrupt your entire life. Because you're going to look up and go, how do I make money? Where's my paycheck coming from? Where's my money coming from? That's why I do videos on here. And I know I get a lot of negative feedback. But I do videos on here and I try to encourage you and try to teach you, hey, you cannot only rely on your paycheck to take care of you. It, the reason being is because now that paycheck has over leveraged your entire life. So if anything happens to that paycheck, everything's going to happen to your life. So your paycheck, think about it this way. Think about a dam. We'll call that a dam, right? And then behind the dam, behind the damn dam is the water, right? So believe it or not, that's water. So that's all this water behind the dam. And that water is being held back by the dam. This is a dam. And this is you. This is you, your family, your house, your car, your entire livelihood is on the other side of that dam. Now that dam is a paycheck. That dam is a paycheck. This, the water is, hope I spell it right. The water is chaos, meaning that the only thing holding back complete and utter chaos and disaster in your life same thing that was i was facing right but the only thing holding back chaos disaster destruction homelessness i did a video earlier talking about a couple i saw that was sleeping in their car in a grocery store parking lot and i've been there done that in fact i've been homeless enough to where if I pass by a vehicle and I look in it, I can tell if they're sleeping in their car. I can tell if they're homeless right now, just that quickly. 
And it breaks my heart because I've been there, done that, and it ain't fun. It ain't pretty. Right? And it's tough. It's tough to get yourself out of that because it's easy to sink into depression. I got news for you. Darkness doesn't, doesn't bring about light. Darkness only gets darker. There's no light in darkness. And there's no darkness in light. Thank God. Right? And so homelessness. Everything. Homeless. Chaos. Disruption. Everything is in the waters that stop by the dam. This dam is your paycheck. What I'm telling you is, if anything happens to that paycheck and this dam breaks, your paycheck disappears, that water is going to flow into your life, completely destroy your car, destroy your house, destroy your family. And I don't want that to happen to you. And that's why I'm on here as often as I can sharing this message with you that you cannot afford and this is going to sound crazy but trust me I'm telling telling you the facts you cannot afford to only have your job as your source of income it can be your primary source of income fine I have no problem with that in fact I'm not even mad you have a job in fact I'm not even telling you to quit your job I'm just telling you it cannot be your only source of income because if anything happens to the job and that paycheck disappears, that water is going to flow over that dam. Your paycheck is your dam. Holding back homelessness, chaos, disruption, struggle life, everything is in those waters. The only thing protecting that water from flowing in your life is the dam called a paycheck. Well, if anything happens to that paycheck, that dam comes down. That water flows into your life, takes your house, takes your car, takes your family, takes everything. Leads you into depression, leads you into homelessness. That's the risk. And they're not going to teach you this in school. I know they won't, but I'm going to teach you here and I'm glad you're here. That's the risk of relying on only your paycheck. By the way, if this is making sense to you and you're sitting there going, you know what? This makes sense. Uh, then hit the thumbs up if you have a question or, or if you want to make a comment, drop it in the comments. Let me know while I'm on because I'm not going to be on here very, very long. And so, but if you stay till the end, I promise you, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your socks off. I got something great for you. And again, in 2020, I started my middleman business and I only, some days I made 300. Again, listen, guys, I know that there are people on YouTube telling you that you can make a million dollars in a month. They're lying to you straight up. I know there's people on here telling you that you could quit your job and, and make $100,000 in a month. They're lying to you. They don't even do that. I'm on here giving you the real truth of what I've been through and what I experienced. Now, I am telling you that if you learn from me, you can probably do better than me because you have somebody to teach you and mentor you and coach you. I didn't have that. My first year, I did 77K. That's it. It's not even 100K. Not even six figures, not going to make you rich. But I always say, hey, not bad for somebody who didn't know what he was doing. I had nobody to teach me. I had to learn the hard way. And not bad for somebody who didn't have to leave the house to do it. When my neighbor found out, because he's he works, uh, he's high up on the board of uh, a T, uh, T Mobile. Uh, yeah, it is T Mobile. I think it is. And uh, he's he's like a consultant for T-Mobile. So he's high up, get flown all around the country. And, and we were talking one day, he teaches me how to take care of the yard. Cause I've never had a yard in my life to take care of. Right. And he's like, Hey, yeah, use this to change the grass, blah, blah, blah. And, and Bill and I are friends. And so Bill says, uh, he says, man, how did they, how did you, you guys do this year? I was like, man, my wife did pretty good. She made a hundred K as a, as a dental hygienist. And I said, man, I was home, so I, I didn't get to do a whole lot. I wanted to do more. And this was this was like 2020. And I was like, uh, I was like, man, I did 77. That's it. I know I, I know he was doing about 150, 200. But I was like, man, because I felt I felt a little embarrassed about the 77. But I was like, man, look, I did 77. I did it from home on my phone. So I hope this year I'm gonna do better. And he was like, what? And 
I was like, yeah, man, 77 from home. He was like, I was like, man, I know that's not a lot. It's not gonna I know the people in this neighborhood crushing that, but you know, I, that's what I did and try to do better. He was like, Sean, let me tell you something, bro. He said 77,000 from home. This is a guy that probably make 180 a year or more. He's like, man, 77K from home. He's like, Sean, I fly all around this country, bro. He said, if I can make 77K from home or 100K from home without leaving this house, I'm, I'm doing it. I ain't leaving this house. They can have the other 100K back. I'll take 100K and stay home. And he was like, man, you're blessed. You're in a really good position. He was like, uh, just being honest with you, 77,000 from home, you're doing pretty good, bro. And I was like, man, I appreciate that because I didn't think much of it uh, because the reason was I didn't know what I was doing and I was just learning. And I, I didn't say all that. I was just like, man, hey, look, this is my first year. I used to do all the moving work myself. I got burned out. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I just started when customers kept reaching out to me to get moves, I would just go ahead and book them and then pay myself a deposit commission and then just send the work to friends that I knew. And that's how I was learning. But there was a bunch of stuff I didn't know. Like I didn't know how to advertise. I didn't know marketing. I didn't know, like I didn't have the script for it. I didn't have the agreements between me and the contractors. I didn't have the agreements between me and the customers. Again, I was just learning all these things. All these things were new to me. And there were times where I could have booked customers and I, I didn't get to book them. I lost money. And so that's why I say I was averaging uh, because I, I probably in that year, uh, I probably was averaging about probably about three, 300 to like four fifty five hundred a day. So the way it worked is I would take one hundred and fifty dollar. Give you guys some game right here. I was taking a hundred and fifty dollar DC. And for everybody who's in, in the training and masterclass, you already know that's a deposit commission. But I was taking a hundred dollar deposit commission for every call. So let's do some math. Right. So I tell you, uh, it can range. We were ranging anywhere from 300 to 1600. 1600 was a great day. Even if I made a thousand dollars from home, I was happy. But for the most part, it was closer around three to four to 500, which still ain't bad. I wasn't leaving the house. It didn't require me to work a lot. I was only working like an hour a day. Just being, just being honest with you. So let's do, let's do some middleman math so I can show you what I was doing. Right. Right. So. In my first year, I would take a deposit commission, we'll call it a DC, of about $150 per booking. So whenever I book the customer, in order for the customer to get a confirmation from me that they are scheduled, and, and at this time I was only doing moving, but, but if they, in order for them to get confirmation that they are scheduled to get moved, and customers will ask you for that, like, hey, can I get an email just verifying I'm good to go? Because I, I guess customers get nervous about be, not being really scheduled and they don't want to get in a, in a bad situation where it's last minute and they're scrambling. So we'd send them out an email, right? So deposit commission was 150 bucks. And then I would do about some days I would do, let's say if I could get four a day. So if I get four that day, I just cleared $600. Now, here's what I need you to know. Each phone call takes, right? Because I would do phone call, I would do text message, I would do email. So I always say there's three ways a customer can contact you. They can contact you by phone, some do. They can contact you by email, some do. And they can contact you by text message. A lot of them like to text. Reason being is because they're really busy, they're at work, they're doing things, they're just going to text you and say, hey, saw your ad, can I get a quote, right? And then you simply submit them a uh, a template that I'll give to you. So you'll take my template, customize it for your business, put your business name on it, and then you'll send it and say, sure, here's the information, blah, blah, blah. You'll give the quote, get their information, and then they'll reply back and say, sounds good. You got anything on this day at this time? And you're like, yes, I have it. I'll go ahead and set that up for you. And you're just texting. Now you can do this on a phone call too, but you're just texting or emailing because a lot of customers nowadays, they like to text. Yes, we got that day. We got that time available. We'll go ahead and set it up. The customer's like, perfect, I'll take it. And then you're like, hey, by the way, there, in order for us to confirm this reservation, there's a $150 service, service deposit due. 
uh, reservation deposit, we call it. So there's $150 reservation deposit, which says you have to make a deposit to get a reservation. People make make deposits for reservations all the time, so this ain't new. And, and then you simply invoice them or take the payment over the phone. It's up to you. But you just take the $1,500 payment. I'm sorry, $1,500. I wish. Uh, the $150 payment. And if you do that four times a day, you got $600. Now, here's the beauty of it. Each booking or reservation, the way I do it, it takes anywhere from five to seven minutes. That's it. So imagine, even if it takes seven minutes, by the way, guys, if this is making sense to you and you understand that you cannot just rely on your job for a paycheck, you've got to find another way to make money just in case something happens. Smash that thumbs up and let me know you agree with me. If you have a question, drop it in the comments while I'm still on. I'm not going to be on very long. Uh, so, and I'm running out of time. So drop your question or comment down low and I'll get to you, I promise, if I see it. And so usually a booking takes about five to seven minutes. So if I'm texting a customer, it could take longer because the customer could be at work. But if it's a phone call, five to seven minutes. Uh, and then you're done, you're on your way. So the booking is five to seven minutes, you're done. And now you got a customer in five to seven minutes. Now, as soon as you book the customer, you're gonna, this means you have the customer's info. Next thing you're going to do is, and I'll teach you how to do it. Some, some of my students like to do the invoices, which is fine. Uh, I prefer to take the card information ASAP over the phone. The reason I do, because I like to get my money right now. And, but if you invoice a customer, they will pay you. The only thing is they may not pay it until they get off from work. They may not pay it to the middle of the night. I've awakened next day and money was in my account. And because the customer may have gotten busy or anything, and they finally pay it at the end of the night. Still good to wake up to it, but I, in my paperwork that I share with you, and I teach you how to do it. So in your paperwork, it's going to let the customer know, hey, you got a certain amount of time to pay this invoice, or we're not booking you. And so customers want to get booked, they'll, they'll pay it. Or if you got the customer on the phone, because they're not going to want to text their card information or email it. So when you get the customer over the phone, blah, blah, blah. Hey, so here's what it sounds like when, whenever I do it. So when the customer contacts me and I'm going through this, I got all the information and I got the customer's info, the customer's book. Now I got to get, now I got to get paid. So you're going to book and then you're going to collect the deposit. So I'm simply going to say, I'm going to say, hey, Ms. Johnson, by the way, uh, congratulations on getting your reservation with us. We're excited. Can't, can't wait to get out and do business with you and get you moved. And also, by the way, just to get you confirmed, there is a $150 service amount that's due, reservation amount that's due, and it does come out of your total balance. Bam, and I'll leave it at that. And the customer's like, yes. And, and so I'll walk them right through it and say, there is a, a reservation amount due of $150. How would you like to pay that? Or I would say, which card would you like to use? And I'll just walk them right through it as if we're, they, they've already agreed. I never ask. I, I leave them. Hey, there's $150 deposit that's due. How would you like to pay it? And most times they say, can I pay it over the phone if they're talking to you? Yes, absolutely. And then give me card number. You'll have an app if you use Stripe. You have an app, PayPal. And you just open the app and you just type in. So you can put the customer on voicemail. I'm sorry, on a speaker. And then say, go ahead with the numbers, blah, blah, blah. And then when the customer finished the numbers, you say, hey, let me reconfirm. I got all this correct, right? Blah, blah, blah. You read it back to them. They say, yes, you hit go, $150 in your account. Now, if you're in a different industry, like roofing, like I got somebody in roofing, their deposits are a lot higher than this. It's like 500 because they take a percentage out of the, the roofing job. And I got somebody who's in heating and AC. Their deposits are way higher than that because of the average heating and AC job could be 2,500. So they might take four or 500 out of it. Uh, so that's up to you. That's why I'll walk you through, hey, which industry do you want to use? I give you a list of industries I like, my top 10. You can choose whichever one you want. You can choose more than one. My advice, though, is do one at a time. So even though I have jumping jack movers, uh, we don't move people. We just we just book deposit dispatch. I also have a cleaning business, jumping jack movers. I don't clean. I don't know anything about cleaning. I never want to. <laughs> and but my, I need to bring in my cleaners early now to get this house clean. And but 
uh, as long as you have a ISP service professional who can help you, they do all the work. All your job is, is to get customers. Make sense? Uh, hit thumbs up if this is making sense. So I'll come and I'll take $150 deposit right here. And then I'll go ahead and reach out to everyone who's uh, an ISP in my area who can service that. And you, it'll look something like this. So you might have an ISP. You might always recommend you get at least 10. But all right, so you got 10 ISPs. The information, the, the, the customer gets booked, they get dispatched, you take the customer's info and you simply contact your ISPs and then somebody's going to say, hey, I'll take that. And they already agree because they know what the money amounts are. Like ours would say, hey, $100 an hour for a two-man crew, however long it takes. And these guys are like, our girls are like, hey, I'll take that. They select it. It's booked. You're done. I'm paid. I don't have to talk to the customer. I don't have to go anywhere. Even if I take four calls a day, maximum, that's about 28, 30 minutes max. In 30 minutes, I made $600. One day I was out with uh, my wife, believe it or not, true story, uh, not long ago. And a customer had my number. I don't know how they got it. It was amazing to me. And I didn't even ask, but I don't know how they got my personal number. So it could have been something from way back when I actually was doing moving. But two customers called that day and I booked them both. I booked them both. 150, 150, dispatched it to a friend I have here in Dallas. The 150 went into my account. He was happy because he got work for his business and his crew. Done. Quick 300 bucks, not even thinking twice, probably took 10 minutes total to do that. Because I know my script, like in my head by heart, I don't have to think about any of that because I've been doing it for years. And so I'll teach you how to do all that, by the way. As I look at the clock, guys, don't let me go over. I've got to be out of here soon. No later than 11, 20, 25. I got to get off here. Oh, uh, I got some questions on here. Somebody said, how do you go about if the contractor needs to go out and do an estimate? So that's a great question. If it's if it's roofing, uh, so the way we solve that, because here's what I know. I can't go out and give an estimate for every move, right? So I do moving. And so whether it's moving, roofing, whatever, uh, I can't always go out and do an estimate. So I'm here at my office. I might be on vacation booking this job. There's no way I can get there. And I don't have anybody to go there, right? So there's a few ways you can do it. You can always go ahead and book the job and then tell the customer on the day of the job that we will do a walkthrough and reassess just to make sure everything's correct. That's one way you can do it. So whenever I'm out, uh, I'm like, hey, by the way, uh, let me see, because I don't want to lose lose your question. Let's see. So go out and do go out and do an estimate. Gotcha. So I'm in my case, I'm like, hey, because uh, the customers, they love to get like estimates or whatever. And I don't give them that because they'll start doing math and they don't want to do business with you because they start thinking about all the money they got to pay you. So I don't get into that, right? I just tell them, hey, whenever we arrive, our, our uh, crew lead is going to walk through, do an, do an accurate estimate. I say accurate so that they can understand. If I give you one now, it's probably not accurate. So I'm leading them to understand that if you want an accurate one, it'll be the day of. So when we get out there, we'll do an accurate the day of, and it'll be the best estimate. Now, that's one way you could do it. The second way you can do it is you can contact one of your ISPs. And you can say, hey, I need someone to go out and do a quick walkthrough because it's going to be local anyway. Right. So somebody. So out of the 10, because I teach you to get 25, but no less than 10. So out of the 10, there's going to be somebody who's going to say, hey, I'll go check this out because I need the work and they're going to want to get the work. Right. And then as soon as this process, you'll go ahead and take your cut. Right. That's another way that you can do it. The third way that you can do it. And this is probably becoming more and more prominent because it's not. It's not feasible to keep going out and give estimates. Understand what I'm saying? So you're, you're not going to be in business long if you have to always be there to give an ex estimate. Now you're driving all over the place. You're burning time. You're missing customers. And if you don't book the job, you made no money. So going out to give estimates, people are starting to get away from that, especially businesses. So again, you can tell them you can do an estimate the day of. Or you can get someone to volunteer and go do an estimate. Or if you're around, you can even do an estimate yourself. 
The other way is you can do a video, uh, a live video of the place, right? So you can get them to do a video and then email the video content to you so you can take a look at what's there. So if, if you're doing cleaning, cleaning is pretty basic. They already knowing there ain't a lot that's going to change. If you're doing moving, you know, there are times uh, when you have to give estimates because you could have like a long distance job. And so, all right, with a long distance job, you're not going to get many, but somebody needs to go out there because the, the distance from the beginning house to the ending house could be hundreds of miles and you can't just go back and forth. So, all right, on this one, we need somebody to go out and the contractors understand, hey, I would love to do it. Hey, listen, John, man, I got one for you. This job's going to be great. But before I can officially schedule it, I need you to go out and do an estimate for me if you don't mind. Make sure that everything is uh, right and everything's where we need it to be. Okay, gotcha, man. I'll go out and check that out, right? And they'll do that for you. The other thing is you can send uh, the customer paperwork, get them to fill out an inventory, or if or you can get the customer to do the estimate for you. So there's a there's a lot of ways like you can you can zoom a customer, you can FaceTime a customer. Again, if you got to go out and give an estimate on site on every job, you're not going to be in business long. So you got to get very creative and get the customer to give you that information without you having to be there. So if I'm on a beach in Miami, which I'm going to be soon, and a customer wants an estimate, I'm just going to say, "Hey, we'll do it the day of." If they don't like that, I'll say, hey, I'll get a guy out. Give us a couple of days. We'll get someone out there. If they don't like that, I'll say, hey, let's uh, I'll tell you what. Can you do a thorough walkthrough and let me see everything that you got available? Uh, so everything that's going to be moved or everything that's going to be cleaned or let me look at your roof from all sides. Can you give me some pictures and whatnot of a close up of your uh, your AC and heating system and on and on and on. So if you can't be there physically, which I don't always recommend then what you need to do is get video content or just photos and use that. So does that help? I'll, I hope it does, but we can't always be out there every time. It's just not possible. All right. So go through these questions real quick. You said you have a cleaning and moving company. Is there a reason behind your choices? I ask because there are tons of servicing. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, the reason I did it in that order, and by the way, I'm on to my third. So, uh, so in my first year, my first, uh, three years, I'm, I was just learning this stuff, right? So in my first three years, uh, we did jump and jack movers, which I still have today. We did movers. Now you guys can go faster than me because I didn't know that I could get into extra industries. I didn't know how to do it. You do because you'll have a blueprint and you just take the same blueprint to every industry, right? So the blueprint is book, deposit, dispatch. There's the blueprint. Now it can be moving, cleaning, Hauling, TV mounting, pressure washing, it does not matter. It's the same blueprint, book, deposit, dispatch. Same thing. So I had a moving company. And then after moving, we went into uh, we went into cleaning. And then my next one, just to let y'all know, I'm going into web design. Now, I don't know anything about building websites, but that's okay. There are people who already know. All I'm going to do is give them a customer, take my money, send the work to them. I'm not touching a website and I'll never learn how to do a website. And I never want to. I don't want to do that hard work. No, my job is to get a customer. You do the work. So I was in moving because uh, to answer your question, I was in moving because in 2017, I started a moving business. So I was homeless in 2017 until I started my moving business. And since I started my moving business, I've never been like without money. And uh, so I started moving business in 2017 to 2020. That's when I got burned out, body hurting physically, like, man, I can't keep doing this. And customers kept hitting me up. And I was like, hey, I got some friends. They do the work. I'll tell them. And that's how I got introduced uh, to being a middleman. So I was kind of led this way, not even knowing what I was doing. And it hit me. I was like, wait a minute. Uber does the same thing. Airbnb does the same thing. They don't do the work. They don't own the driver. They don't own the car. They don't own the house. All they do is matchmake and get paid. Wait a minute. I could do the same thing. Right. And so that's when I took it seriously. May 77 came my first year and started learning what to take on deposits, learning, learning things. And so that's what got me into moving. I was already kind of in the industry, but 
that that answer is probably not going to help you because you're not in the service industry, but this one will. The reason I moved into cleaning is not because I know how to clean. I don't know anything about cleaning and I don't want to know. I don't even like cleaning my own house. And the reason I got into cleaning is because I found someone, I came across someone who had a cleaning service. And we were just kind of talking and chatting and it's like, what do you do? Yeah, I have a cleaning service. We, we do all this work. And keep in mind, I'm in Dallas. I live in Dallas. And we were talking online. This person's from Jacksonville, Florida. So I'm not even in Jacksonville, Florida, but I have a cleaning service in Jacksonville, Florida. And so what I did is we basically partnered together and I said, hey, here's here's how are you at getting uh, customers? I'm not that great. I'm great at cleaning. OK, perfect. All I want you to do is be great at cleaning, be great at doing the thing. Right. I'm going to help you get customers and we're going to work together. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to book the customer, get the info. I'm going to take a deposit and then whatever you make after that, I'm going to dispatch it to you. You keep the rest of the money. And she was like, heck, yeah, I'll do it. And so now I was able to go open my moving service, my cleaning service online in Florida, market my business in Florida, get customers to contact me from Florida, from Jacksonville. And then I'll do the same thing I do here. That's the best part about it. Wherever you are, whoever asks that question, I'm not in your city, but I can still do business in your city. I can do business in your city today. I could I could promote my business right there in your city, get a customer today, book them, and then find a contractor or a service professional, send the work to them, and they go out and do the work. And I'm not even there. So that's how I got into uh I got into this. And I know someone. Because you just meet people and find out what they do. Hey, what do you do? And that's how you start. So I met someone and he has a website design service, but he's not good at getting customers. Guess who is? I am. And so I am simply going to use his business to do the work. And then I'm going to book deposit dispatch. And so he charges because I already know the numbers, which is why I'm excited about this. He, and I'll let you out in a little secret because I haven't talked about this. He charges for his website, his basic website design with a certain amount of pages, some stuff he was telling me. I don't really know. It was over my head. Uh, but I do know numbers because he was like, man, you got to have this, the bandwidth. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't know what that is. Uh, tell me what the numbers look like. He was like, man, on a base site, I charge 2500 bucks. I was like, perfect. Would you be willing to do a base site for 2000 the same site, if I bring you the customer? He's like, yeah, I'll do it for that. So... He, if, if it's 2500 to the customer, he wants 2000 then that leaves me with what? The 500 So now my deposit, I told you deposits change. I'll just try to teach you to be close to 100 150 so that you can make money every call. That's what I teach you. But as your industry changes, you can decide what you want. Whatever your ISP is willing to work for, you factor out the difference in that. That's your money. So if they're willing to do the job for 300 and you can get the customer to book it for five, you take the two. It's that easy. So we're going to be making 500 per uh, per booking, per reservation. And most of the reservations come online. We don't even have to talk to the customers. Most of the, they, There's a note box. They can fill out their own information. Bam, we could do maybe, uh, well, I'm not doing any of that. He could do the follow-ups. I'm just booking, right? And then I'll send the work to him. So I'll say, and I'll let you know his name. His name's Igor. And so I'm like, hey, Igor, I booked the job, got my deposit, rest is yours, buddy. I just sent him $2,000. He didn't even have to talk to a customer. He's taking that all day. So that's how I get into the industries. I look around to see, hey, what's popping? You know, who, who's every, I, I look around, I see garage companies everywhere. I know y'all need customers. What, what are y'all numbers? Oh, we charge this and this. Oh, bet. So I could charge this, take my cut, and you'll still do the work for that? Yeah. Oh man, we're in business. Jumping Jack Garage. I'm, I'm making that up, but I hey, I might do it next year. You never know. And uh, I think there's another question. I'm trying to get to them, guys, before I leave. And uh, if I miss one, I apologize. So that's how I get into the industries. I just try to match up with an ISP. And uh, well, e even if I don't, uh, like, because you could get a customer without having an ISP. Uh, as long as you give yourself enough time to go get the ISP, because you could book a job today for, I don't know, think of something, window cleaning, and then you just jump online and find a window cleaner. So uh, it's that easy, but I teach you how to do it and how to set it up and, and how to get that agreement and all that stuff put in place. And But it's, it's not hard. It's not complicated at all. Uh, 
Well, if you take the 150 deposit, the 150, it, it varies. So for me, it's 150. For you, depends on what industry you choose, it can be more or less. But when you take the deposit, uh, yes, that comes to me and the company that you're partnering with. Yes, they know it. So in the agreement, because you always got to be fair and honest. Hey, I'm taking th this. This is my cut. Yours might be a percentage. So you might say 10 percent of whatever I schedule for you. And that way your money comes out up front. So you don't have to wait on anybody else to pay you. You've already gotten paid. That's why you take it in the form of a deposit. And so the money is yours. They understand that that money is out. They understand the numbers. They get the numbers. So for me, it'll say, it'll say, hey, the customer's going to pay you $100 an hour. I've already taken out a 150 deposit, blah, blah, blah. So they already know, hey, the customer's paying 150. So everything after that belongs to us. And the customer knows too, because the customer gets the, uh, the email with all the information. And uh, let's see. Somebody say, how did you find your ISPs? Uh, there's a there's a bunch of ways you can find them. I have my preferred ways uh, that you can build rapport and relationship with them. <clears throat> and uh, I also teach you uh, in the main in the uh, training and the masterclass how to do it around the country. So you can't always connect with them physically because I'm not in Jacksonville. But yet, you know, I have a relationship with uh, some ISPs in, in Jacksonville. Right. And so I'm probably never going to physically sit down and meet them. We'll probably never be friends, except for on a professional level, right? So you got to get very creative when it comes to finding them, grading them, keeping them or letting them go. And I teach you all of that uh, in, in a six-hour training. Let's see. It's just like the app Dolly. Probably. I'm, I'm not sure what Dolly is. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of companies are middleman companies, uh, Tender is a middleman company. They just match make. Uh, Uber, middleman company. They just connect you to what you need. Uh, Google is a middleman company. They don't sell you anything. They just send you where you need to go. And Craigslist, <laughs> on and on. These companies that, all, and think about it, all these companies are worth billions of dollars. They all do the same processes. So it ain't rocket science. I'll just teach you, teach you how to do it on a service level from your phone. So instead of you having a big corporate company, uh, which you would love to have, I would love to have, but I'm going to teach you how to make money from your house using your phone, and then you could grow to whatever you want to do, right? And so, okay, Greg said doing flooring, right? So, Greg, uh, the way you, the way you will go about that, <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, the way you'll go about that, Greg, because remember, oh, let me check the time. I don't want to be late. I got to get out of here. Oh, oh, time to go. Uh, Greg, really quick, the way you would go about that, uh, you, you, there's no way you could physically get to every floor, uh, to every person's floor. There's no way you could do that. So I don't know anything about flooring, but I would just, just off the top of my head, I need to know your square footage. I need to know what type of tile or flooring you want to put down so I can know what I need, uh, what my numbers are, and what I can tell to the, to the, uh, the ISP. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll capture the information. Ma'am, sir, I'll give you a call right back. Contact my ISP. Say, here's what I'm looking at. What would you charge for that? They'll give you a number. <clears throat> so your ISP, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. <clears throat> so your ISP might say, hey, let's do, I can do all of that for, I'm just throwing a number out, 550, right? And then you're going to contact the customer and, and say, hey, yeah, sure. We'll come out and do all of that for 675. Right. Customers say, hey, perfect. I'll take it. So the difference is 125. Still not bad. Uh, and I don't know the numbers. I'm just making an example. This is 125, which still comes to you. Mm -hmm. Now, in the beginning, I'm going to be thinking about all that. But as you go, uh, you're not you're not going to be thinking about. Uh, you're not going to have to think about all these things, because as you get familiar with your industry and your ISPs, you're going to know these numbers just off the top of your head. So, all right, somebody put one last comment and guys, I got to go, said, uh, somebody said, great stuff. I'm interested. I'll be attending the Zoom. Uh, listen, in order to get the Zoom link, because I for some reason I can't post it on these lives. I don't know how. <laughs> but in order to get the Zoom link, <clears throat> you can email me at middlemanceoinfo, I-N-F-O, at gmail.com. Or you could just wait on this video to post, put Zoom in the comments. I get it out to you. 
or you can simply follow me on Instagram, Middleman CEO, Facebook, DM me, or you can uh, go to one of my other previous videos and just write Zoom in the comments. That's all you need. I'll send you the link. The train is tomorrow night. Uh, I promise it's going to bless you and change your life. Uh, I'm just telling you, I don't know what to tell you. It's just going to be fire and it's going to bless you and change your life. So share this. Let somebody else know about this. I'm ready to help you change your life. The only real question is, will you allow me to help you to change your life? Just think about this, guys. What would your life look like if you made just an extra $5,000 a month without needing a job? Keep your job, but without needing a job to do this and without having to leave your house and having freedom. I just showed you $600 a day, $1,200 in two days. Let's say you have seven minute phone calls. There's only four bookings for me. I'm on the phone 28, 30 minutes max. So 30 minutes of work, I made $600. Who else paying you that? I'm just saying. All right, guys, I got to go. Be blessed. See you on the next video. Get in the Zoom. Don't miss it out. Peace.